Hey everyone, Zyrum here with some thoughts on last epoch patch 0.8.1 which released about a month ago. As always, I'm extremely fast with providing my content always up to date, you know me. I finally put enough hours in, around 40, to feel confident about having a well informed opinion, so let's get to it. Starting with the monolith. I recently released a video on how I feel about the monolith as an endgame system after a few hundred hours or so, so I won't go into that one. Instead, I'll be focusing on the three new timelines that were added, and I really enjoyed these new timelines. The random echoes are of course just that, but the new narratives these timelines provide are interesting and give us a few new takes on existing lore. The new timelines are scaled to level 90, and as a result, the level requirements changed around a bit as well for other timelines. The three new timelines are available after killing the Emperor of Souls. But most importantly, how are the bosses and loot? The boss fights are well designed, I feel, although I can imagine that characters without much movement speed have massive issues defeating them. You can see a clear evolution in boss design as far as I'm concerned, which two years ago brought us pretty boring and lazy dragons and now provides dynamic encounters where bosses have more abilities and in this case they even interact with each other from time to time, creating beams of fire you need to stay away from. I feel the bosses these days strike a good balance between being hectic, somewhat chaotic, but still clear and telegraphed enough in their abilities that you feel it is fair. I remain a little skeptical about dying during a boss fight and then having to run a bunch of random echoes to try again. It happened a few times this monolith as well and it's just such a downer. I don't mind dying but this just feels so bad. We'll see if this remains in the game or not. Something else that got implemented is empowered timelines for each timeline, where previously we only had three of those. I don't feel incentivized to play empowered timelines, even though there are cool uniques to collect and improved blessings. It's probably because of the modifiers, which I already find tedious on the regular timelines, and they're even stronger in empowered timelines. Also, they added nine new echo layouts. I've seen and played most of them, if not all of them, and they're very solid additions to the echo pool. Well designed, fun to play. It's all good. All in all, the monolith got a significant content improvement, some new blessings, new bosses, new uniques. It's good stuff. Then, F exchanges and itemization. The main issue before this patch with gearing characters was that you had to gear very defensively because there are so many damage types you need to be resistance capped against and there were not that many options to get all these resistances. So how are you getting your resistances these days? Well, most resistance affixes were buffed a lot basically and now you can get capped by having just two well rolled affixes, which is a huge upgrade. Regular gear got a lot of resistances on implicits, which helps and there are some found in skills and passives. It allows for more versatility because it's easier to get res capped, which makes for more interesting, less gear dependent builds. Tier 6 and tier 7 affixes, which when rolled on items resulted in so-called exalted items, have been buffed massively by up to 30%. The aim is to make exalted items more exciting. I didn't find too many, I don't have an opinion on this yet, but the intention and the design direction are definitely good. You're incentivized at least to either shatter these items now or maybe try to craft on them by using a rune of removal and slam some new stuff over there. Tier 7 is so strong that it is worth it. Another great change regarding affixes is that you can have plus skill affixes now. These affixes give you a skill point in the tree plus some additional stats that make sense for that particular skill. They're really fun to build around and although they are rare of course, they fit in well with the deterministic crafting system. You can destroy gear and extract those precious affix shards and use them on new gear. Using this method, you can craft yourself some pretty nuts items, although you need to get lucky not to break them of course. It may not be as thrilling as closing your eyes and wasting an exalted orb, but it is still pretty good. Due to the whole harvest drama in PoE, you see more and more creators and players flock to Last Epoch because this game does offer the deterministic crafting that GGG is so vividly against. It's an interesting development and I'm sure the guys and girls from 11th Tower Games aren't complaining either. Crafting is easily one of the more interesting and distinguishing features in Last Epoch and it's good to see the devs recognize that and create systems and affixes around crafting that supplement and solidify it, such as the plus skill affixes. These affixes are reason enough to create a strict loot filter and just grind some endgame content, especially for people not caring about millions of DPS, but people just caring about fun builds. Some more points to spend, some more options to explore. Those are my kind of builds, to be honest. Crafting itself was expanded by adding a rune that re-rolls 
implicit, a blessed orb basically, super useful, good addition, and to top it off, relics are now class specific, like chests and helmets, which means they can roll more class specific, more interesting affixes, good change, I think. There's a nice balance now between class specific items and generic ones, like the devs wanted as described in their dev blog about automation and affixes. After playing the new patch for a while, I think it's safe to say that they largely succeeded in their vision and that it translated well into the game. After this patch, loot and getting loot is a lot more exciting because the affixes on them are a lot more exciting, which makes the whole thing a lot more fun. The loot game is definitely upped by a few points. All of this is really exciting, it's well implemented, once again, good stuff. Then, new skills. I didn't try Surge, so I won't comment on it. I did create a new Primalist and started using Warcry to try and trigger a bunch of Maelstrom stacks and it worked out, sort of. It looked better on paper, but with some gear I may be able to make it work. Warcry is a well implemented skill though. There are a ton of different options. The notes synergize well with Primalist archetypes. It's available for any mastery, it's definitely not overpowered in my opinion, and a 1.5 second stun can be a lifesaver. It's the sort of design we've come to expect out of the last epoch skill design department and whoever is creating all these magnificent skill trees is doing a stellar job. Skills and the way they work is a second distinguishing feature as far as I'm concerned and it's cool to see that new skills are being added with extensive skill trees that allow for plenty of different builds based on just this skill tree alone. So also on the skill changes I'm very excited, it's once again good stuff. Another nice feature the game offers now is a functional DPS tooltip. DPS was displayed before but it was rather useless. The new tool is cool but its usefulness is mainly tailored towards comparing your own DPS when you swap gear. If you want to know if one weapon is better for a skill than the other, the tooltip is very useful. This helps especially new players a lot, but also existing players or those not too keen on theory crafting, like me, can be very happy with this tool. I have to say it doesn't work just yet for everything. I did some testing with Maelstrom and the tooltip gave me the wrong numbers there because my dummy testing clearly showed one weapon being better than the other, but the tooltip said the exact opposite. Calculating DPS is difficult however, as so many parameters influence the numbers. Focusing on DPS is a bit of a fun killer anyway in my opinion, but if you want to know what to equip, the new tool typically works rather well. So this one is going to sound pretty bad, but I started the new Primal List to try out Warcry like I said, and also to see the new animations. And honestly, I didn't really notice that much of a difference. I'm not particularly impressed with the way the Primal List moves now, and I wasn't particularly bothered bothered with the way he moved before. And I played my fair share of primalists, I got build guides and everything, I like, I, I've seen this, right? These are things I do notice less however and I don't pay much attention to them, but in my mind the changes to the mage were much more visible for some reason. Alright, up next, a defensive overhaul is implemented too. Now like I said I'm not a theory crafter, so I'm not gonna dive into the percentages and whatnot. I just wanted to touch on endurance, the new stat, which I explained in my preview video on the patch. And when reading the new changes and the new defense stat, two things stood out to me. First, and I mentioned this in the video as well, this mechanic seemed extremely strong on paper. And if something sounds strong on paper in Last Epoch, you can be pretty sure it's going to be broken in game. And it was. It was completely busted and players were running around with their entire endurance threshold covering their health pool. Which meant they had 60% plat mitigation on their entire health pool. I mean, even I saw this coming, which says a lot. It didn't take the devs long to realize their mistake and endurance was nerfed only to cover a percentage of the health pool instead of flat numbers. And now people with game knowledge claim that stacking health is superior anyway, so endurance is a useless stat. Defenses are boring, but you gotta build some defense, as they say. So you might as well take the best stats available to you and go back to the fun stuff like damage, skill trees and gear. Which begs the question why this was implemented in the first place. I feel that for the current state of the game, additional defense mechanics aren't necessary, and this seems to be implemented mostly to give each class their own specific defense mechanic, but it comes across is forced. The rogue has dodge, sentinel has block, the acolyte has leech and the mage has ward and the primalist didn't really have anything so they invented endurance. But why you'd want a stat in the game that offers flat mitigation regardless of class or gear or hardly any investment is beyond me honestly. It's early access however and we shouldn't critique the devs too much for trying things out as that is sort of the point as well in early access. I mean GGG does a beta test every leak start and then fixes their stuff three weeks later. Be that as it may, the implementation of endurance wasn't a great success and the current state of endurance may not be great either. To be continued. 
I guess. Other defense mechanisms were tweaked, but I'm not the correct guy to comment on the impact of those changes. I just equip a shield and I see if I like how the defense feels. If I do, I keep it, otherwise I go back to a two-hander. That is how I approach these games. McFluffin on his channel or stream has a good insight in game mechanics like this if you're interested, so check him out if you want to know more. I'll link him in the card in the description. Then some smaller notable changes. Minions got buffed with scaling stats the more you level. Starting at level 20, your minions deal more damage and take less damage, all the way up to level 100. At that point, they deal 40% more damage and take 40% less damage, which is multiplicative with other modifiers. Haven't tried this yet, but it should for sure help. The gambler got nerfed, meaning that you need to pay much more gold now for gambling. I feel to offset the nerf, we should be able to spam click the gambler and not have this excruciatingly slow waiting time. I'm not a fan of the gambler as a concept, but the few seconds I have to wait to see the rolls of each item make me not want to gamble either way. XP at higher levels got nerfed. To some extent, this doesn't matter unless they start implementing XP penalties on death. Right now, your characters never lose XP anyway, so making it to level 100 isn't a challenge at all, it is just a grind. I hope this changes and that there's an achievement tied to this maybe. Until then, they can nerf XP all they want, it doesn't impact anyone really. A bunch of uniques got reworked and set items as well, in particular the older ones. I have most of these stored in a stash and a quick look at the set and unique tabs provide a nice overview of the stuff that changed. Some interesting ideas here, some cool concepts, I like it. Lagon is fixed, at least according to the patch notes. I had multiple instances where he one shot me at the start of phase 3 and now we should wait at least when attacking. The fight is still scuffed in my opinion with poorly telegraphed attacks and this is easily the worst boss fight the game has to offer. But but okay, you can skip the timeline, you don't need to kill him in the campaign either, it's all good. I just hate this boss. The campaign got several overhauled zones. I did another playthrough, like I do every large patch, and the new zones are very well done. The campaign feels more fluid and natural to progress through even after doing it 50 plus times. It used to be extremely confusing with you being hurled into one era after another without having any clue of what's going on. It did make you more invested in the protagonist maybe, who suffered the same fate, but still. If only it had randomly generated levels, that'd be nice. And as always, there are new Numerous graphics, sound and visual design changes, all neatly described in the patch notes. And the more you play the game, the more you notice these small things. Next to some massive new features, they never lose sight of the details. And the devs recognize that small details like critters or a small UI overhaul or minor quality of life features really add to the overall immersion and experience of playing a game. Finally, the elephant in the room, the performance elephant. Apparently casting visuals were improved, increasing performance. I can just talk about my own experiences here in the last epoch in patch 0.8.1 still runs pretty crappy from time to time, sometimes to even single digit frame rates. What is interesting in the performance issues by the way is that it doesn't matter what settings I use. Whether I'm running on low or ultra, performance is about as bad. And what's even weirder, when I'm running last epoch on my massive widescreen, my 32 by 9 aspect ratio 1440p screen, the game runs about as well as on a regular monitor. This leads me to believe that more than anything, it has to do with stuff that isn't graphics related. The game just has a few things going on that completely tank the engine or something. If you want to know what I mean, just play a poison and totem build and see if you get more than 10 frames per second in the arena. A big performance upgrade project has started from EHG so hopefully the game runs better in the future. It needs to because this can't be the baseline for multiplayer performance, it would be unacceptable. Imagine running in this area with two or three buddies, these are Empyrean style frame rates. But the devs know, which is why they started that big performance project. And Mike yesterday in the stream was very excited about some of the new upcoming features regarding performance. So let's see. The next major patch is supposedly some time off. This development cycle would take a few weeks longer, around 4 weeks they said yesterday. Which means I think that the next patch drops in around maybe 8 weeks or something? It's some time's off, but hey, there's other stuff to do in the meantime. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.